Greetings, citizens, and welcome to another adventure of the Real Comic Heroes podcast. I'm Travis. And I'm Patrick. Oh, boy. <laughs> yeah, we're here for an epic tale. Oh, yeah. You know what? Should I start with the taglines? Yeah, let's, yeah, go for it. Okay, well, the one that we saw in the actual cover art was uh, The Ultimate in Alien Terror. But I found two other ones that were just, one was epic. I loved it. Yeah. One is Anytime, Anywhere, Anyone. I like that. That's good. And my favorite, Man is the Warmest Place to Hide. Ooh, <laughs> that's creepy. I know. <laughs> Man, but it kind of gives away the movie, so I can see why they didn't take it. Yeah. It tells I, you already. I feel like the uh, the one that they went with, the alien terror, is like a jab at alien. That's what I was thinking. Because you know? so. it came out like a little later. Like, yeah, you know, like three, three or four years later. Because I think Alien was 79. And Alien 2 comes out in 86. 86? Wow, it was that far apart. Yeah, we, we're not going to be there for... Okay, well, while. there goes that theory that Alien 2 is coming soon or oh, something. Yeah. Wow. But yeah, I uh, I wouldn't have known it was an alien movie. Yeah. Because, like, well, uh, until you saw the opening sequence with the spaceship. Sure. But um, just by looking at the cover art, like, yeah. I thought it was going to be like a Yeti movie or something. <laughs> yeah, that, that cover art is, yeah, it doesn't, I don't know, it doesn't fit with the movie being like a body horror you know movie just having the silhouette of a man you know with yeah. his face like i don't know i love the poster the art's great but mm-hmm. it yeah yeah i like the warm uh man is the warmest place to hide that's, that's pretty pretty crazy <laughs> so apparently it's not a tanta yeah yeah <laughs> <laughs> so i always thought that was the warmest place to hide well yeah but silly me <laughs> uh, it's funny that you mentioned the that opening with the spaceship because I had zero memory of there being a I spaceship in the, in the opening before the you know even the title you see the little spaceship and then throughout the movie you see the spaceship and I had zero recollection yeah. of that. Yeah, I saw so, it a few years ago and I don't remember yeah, it being that obvious we, that it was an alien. Yeah, I was like, wait, what? I thought it was just. I guess I didn't think you ever found out where it came from or. It was just yeah. this thing that we didn't watch like a weird version, did we? <laughs> I, as far as I know, and, and from what I found, there aren't a bunch of versions of this. There's not a director's huh. cut. There's not, you know. So I must have watched this version a couple years ago. It's probably been five or six years since I've yeah. watched this for the first time. It's funny because we haven't even said what we're watching, but the uh, title should give it away. So yeah, <laughs> but just to. Just to make it official, we're doing John Carpenter's The Thing from 1982. Starring Kurt Russell in a sexy, in, sexy... In Kurt know. Russell's beard. Kurt Russell's beard does play a magnificent role. Yeah. Especially with snow scenes. Yeah. <laughs> but I was going to say Wilfred Brimley. Oh, yeah. It, he, it's so weird <laughs> seeing him in this because he doesn't look like... Wilford Brimley, you know? He's not talking about diabetes. He's not talking about the diabetes, <laughs> and he doesn't have the mustache. Yeah. And I don't know, he just looks... It is weird. It's like seeing your dad when he was younger. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it's like, wait, no, that doesn't work. Yeah. Who is this strange young doctor yeah. or whatever? He... Yeah, young Wilford Brimley. <laughs> Granted, he's probably was like ne- 60. That man was never young. <laughs> <laughs> you want to talk about act breaks? Sure. Okay. So uh, after the autopsy of the corpse they brought back the twisted mangled thing yeah is um, it the the one from the other station or the yeah. dog monster obviously? oh i was going with the other station oh, okay like they went to the station brought that back and okay. everyone was like staring at it after that i put was the but are you talking more the so you had the dog sequence in the second act was that i thought that was before uh the dog went apeshit hmm at least that's how it seems in my head. Yeah. Because the guys came by shooting up shit, and then uh, they needed to find out what the hell was going on, so they went to their uh, yeah. Norwegian yeah. space station <laughs> of yeah. sorts and brought, found that body and brought right. it back. And then after that was the dog going crazy, I thought. Okay. Is that yeah. Map? Okay. Yeah. And that's the movie. I'm good either way. <laughs> Act one, done. <laughs> done. I basically just summed it up. Yeah. <laughs> um, then we have Act Two ends after the blood tests 
have been done and they reveal I think his name was Palmer mm-hmm. the other pilot I think yeah it was after the, uh, blood test. the blood test with the like a wire yeah. into the petri yeah. just dish of blood yep so that's where we are going um yeah let's start with act one uh, a very uh, ominous tone is set with like the music and yeah. well the desolate landscape yeah but the music was just i knew i was in for a time of that fun <laughs> they yeah, weren't going to be doing keg stands when it showed the <laughs> arctic base yeah um yeah the music i didn't notice it wasn't like in your face like a john williams score or no it was very know. simplistic yeah um it but it, it definitely fit with the movie with the horror tone um, and it's done by Ennio Morricone, Morricone, I think. And he did, did a lot of the like, spaghetti westerns, uh, even as recently as uh, uh, The Hateful Eight. I know he worked with Quentin Tarantino on music okay. for that one. I wasn't, when I saw the dog at the beginning, yeah. the sled dog that they're chasing, mm-hmm. um, I actually wrote down, is it a wolf or is it a husky sled dog? Um, I found out it's actually... An Alaskan Malamute, mm-hmm. but it's half wolf. Oh, okay, so it is. And I, I watched the. Uh, I actually watched a making of documentary yesterday, just to find out some background information because, um, like we've already talked about, we don't have a ton of notes on this one, so I felt like I needed to like go <laughs> a little deeper and you know find out what I could elsewhere. Oh, so they were talking about the the dog, and his name's Jed, and. <laughs> they said on the set you could tell when he went like into wolf mode because he would get like I guess wolf wolves don't they don't bark they don't you know they're not loud they're very stealthy yeah, and they say when sense. a wolf goes quiet that's when you need to be afraid and so they said on set if the wolf just is staring at you and is silent and you know um they say don't don't like run don't you know show big signs of fear don't you know make <laughs> sudden movements that kind of thing like, like basically just fear. back away um <laughs> or wait for like the the handler or whatever to kind of take care of the situation but i was really impressed just it felt like the actual like jed it felt like the wolf dog was actually acting when he was like coming down the hallways and like pausing at certain open doors you yeah. know it was really just took me out of it because i was impressed by how good of a like just i don't know animal actor this this dog was well that makes sense i guess because they're dealing with something that's not really a dog in the movie yeah and he's part wolf part dog so he's not really a dog per se so (laughs) right he was born to play this role yeah um i i wasn't sure at the beginning because it it the dog runs up to the guys it licks i think it's uh Clark like licks, licks his face or whatever. Mm-hmm. I couldn't tell if that's when there was a trans transference of yeah, because they thingness. said only a little bit. Yeah, the particles yeah. is all it takes or whatever. So that yeah. would have been good a time as any. Yeah, but then why didn't he just lick everybody? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> Bing, so yeah, bang, my, boom, you're done. So the that was my first kind of point was the finding out more about the dog and yeah, I guess uh, more to my point with the music, it was like jarring and awesome that superstitious was in the movie oh yeah the stevie wonder song yeah i was like what what yeah they probably just needed something from the time that was popular yeah but... i mean that's a big get yeah and uh i don't know i just it was kind of funny having such a funky song up in the arctic like yeah <laughs> and it I've still yet to know what they're doing up there. I don't see anybody sciencing. I see a lot yeah. of cards, billiards, and drinking. Yeah. I just in in reading, you know, the background stuff, I know that Blair, who Wolford Brimley was yeah. a pathologist. Mm-hmm. I don't know what pathologists do, I guess blood diseases? Yeah. Okay. Uh, I know the term pathogen. Yeah. Which is blood uh, um, born or something like that. I know Norris, who is a guy later on that does as the stomach like chest oh. bursting scene or whatever. Spoilers. Uh, yeah. Um, <laughs> Norris was a geologist and then I don't remember what any of the other, you know, what, what the other guys were. One guy was a cook. Uh, 
Yeah, yeah. <laughs> McCready was just a pilot. Yeah. Like he wasn't. You know, didn't a have a, he wasn't guy. a scientist. Yeah. So yeah, they didn't. They definitely don't like the Norwegians. They were looking for something in the ice. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah I don't group, know what these guys what were the doing. doing. I, yeah, it's what just, kind of tests they were doing, or what kind of research they were. Whatever it was, it was not worth it. <laughs> yeah. Well, actually, uh, I I gotta give it up to the Norwegian guy, uh, okay. the main shooter. Horrible yeah. shot, but sure. man, he was trying. Oh yeah, and yeah. the desperation in his face when he got out, like <laughs> yeah, like it was like he didn't even know anyone else was around. Right, didn't it care, just, doesn't matter. Eye on the prize. <laughs> yeah, yeah. When he jumps out of the helicopter, starts throwing those, I guess thermite, you know, charges <laughs> or whatever, basically throwing grenades <laughs> at everybody. Yeah, not a good way to welcome yourself to. A yeah, group of yeah. I like that. There's an obvious language barrier, so you know. They know that they wouldn't. He wouldn't be able to communicate quickly enough. You know why he needs to kill this dog. <laughs> yeah. You know. Um, I like kind of going into the uh, when they when they go to the Norwegian base and start doing the snooping around, looking for clues or, or just find out what was going on there. Um, I noticed this, that searching around in the dark with a flashlight is a is it's a perfectly used horror trope. When they're certain, yeah. When they're looking around in the Norwegian base, because we all know what it's like to, you know, look around in the dark with a flashlight. Like, you know, everything looks scarier than it should, or just, you know, yeah. it. There's a creepiness to it, and it works really well in the movie. Yeah, it plays with shadows. Yeah, and you have yeah. limited view of range, and yeah, yeah. I like the uh, blood sickles from the wrists. I know Those that was so that cool. was awesome. Because at first I was like. Are those like tendons ripped yeah. out and like stretched over the place? And I was yeah. like, wait, it's cold. Just blood. It's yeah. just blood that's been dripping. Yeah. I thought having them discover the Norwegian base, I thought it was a smart way to introduce what was, you know, for the audience, like, this is what's going to happen, you know, yeah. Yeah. at the end of, of this crew, the, the American crew. So I thought it was a nice way to preview kind of the horror that, that they were in store for. Yeah. Um, and then I, found out in the making of that they just filmed all the Norwegian based stuff when it was like blown to hell and you know places parts of it were burnt they just used the American base the American outpost once they wrecked it at the end of the movie they just then used that wreckage as the Norwegian base yeah so instead of making a burnt out husk yeah. of a Norwegian base they just used the same location recycling smart yeah <laughs> other than what was it we uh conan mm -hmm. they filmed all that like the village you know in the snow and then they just burnt everything like destroyed yes. it all so yeah they come across uh the uh, twisted remains of a burnt man that the melted face is so yeah. horrifying it's basically like they were like okay what would a really effed up melted wax figure look like yeah because it's almost split in half, right? And, but stretched in half more. And it has like two separate faces, but it's like yeah. one face is stretched into two. Yeah. It, I'm just wondering what kind of person came up with these ideas. Yeah. Because <laughs> there are some bizarre imagery going yeah. on. Like, I'll talk about the guy that was oh. that did most of the effects. I'm assuming he's a serial Later. killer. Probably. No, no it's funny. It, it's worth watching parts of the the making of documentary because it's uh rob botine and dude is just as happy and like excited about his work you know Serial and dude killer. is like yeah <laughs> but like full of energy and he, you can tell like when he's talking about the the stories of of working on this movie like he just has a smile on his face that you know you can just tell he loved what he was doing even though what he was doing was some of the darkest creepiest stuff you know yeah. ever um but that Oh. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, of course, it seems like a good idea to bring this corpse back to the base. I Naturally. Mean, after what just happened to that base, why not see what you can do to recreate it? Yeah. Granted, they've already left the dog in, but mm -hmm. still. I, yeah. I would have had another mission out there and maybe checked out the body while it's there. Yeah, I think with dealing with... Especially when you said it in the Antarctic, they knew, they, they knew even going to the base... They were going to be risking, you know, getting to the Norwegian base and getting back. They had, they knew it was like an hour flight there, an hour flight back. So they knew they couldn't, you know, 
Yeah, but that chapter delay ain't, too much that because they're not big, and that corpse probably took up yeah. most of the chapter. Yeah, um, but they there was uh, something that they talked about with the weather. How's the weather look? Yeah, they you know, before they went out there, so they yeah. knew they were you know stretched for time. Yeah, and so, I, I don't know if I'd get with McCready. Um, seems to have a bit of a drinking problem. A little bit. Yeah, uh, but then the <laughs> other pilot was seemed to be smoking pot the entire time. Or maybe he was smoking cigarettes, but he definitely seemed like he yeah. was stoned. So I think we're pretty much closing in on Act One's end. Yeah, because this is about when yeah they bring Jed. They lock the uh, the other dog up with the other sled dogs, like right after the. Yeah, and it's weird that they're just letting this dog hang out in their uh, bro den because um, the other oh, dogs are all right. locked up. So yeah. why is that dog just yeah free I think to that's, move about? Yeah. That was the one dude's point about, you know, lock him up with the rest of them or whatever. Um, but if at this point, then, Clark would have already been infected. Yeah. So may, it's well, real weird because I can't tell. Because when, he, he's infected, but is he not transformed right. until the clothes rip off and his body is taken over? Yeah, I'm real. Like there's a staged process, I yeah. think. Yeah. I couldn't tell if it was a situation where once you become infected, you know you're infected and you want to kill the rest of, you know. I don't think so until it's taken over. Yeah. I think of it as a parasite where okay. you may not feel right, but you don't know why. And okay. then when you figure it out, it's too late. <laughs> yeah. That's what I, and since he got it through the licking, it yeah. wasn't as direct as, you know, like Maybe. when they're throwing their hand through the face or whatever. Yeah, that was awesome. <laughs> So it takes time. Yeah. That's how I took it because that's the only way it made sense. Yeah. <laughs> At least to um, the aspect of like the timing of things. Yeah. Because I know they found that torn up uh, clothing in the right. dustbin of the kitchen. Yeah. So And you couldn't tell whose it was, so who knows when that happened. And Yeah. So it, the timing, it, it, that's what this movie does. It kept me from taking notes because I kept trying to follow the pieces even yeah. though i'd seen it i uh, if you don't watch it after like a couple of years you're gonna forget the subtle like like who's who and yeah. what's what because it's yeah. all a bunch of white guys well not all white guys at least right but all the white guys kind of looked alike to me, to me yeah yeah <laughs> they're all kind of scruffy or bald right <laughs> yeah except, i had a except hard for the time. military man yeah um like the like the radio guy oh windows uh, yeah yeah i kept Confusing him with, uh, uh, what you call it? No, it wasn't him. No, he, it was He the, almost had the same look as, as Kurt Russell. Kurt Russell, yeah. yeah. And the, I didn't really confuse them too much, yeah. but you could, I see. Yeah. It was the guy that uh, had the glasses. Um, Fuchs? Fuchs. Yeah. I kept forgetting who Fuchs was. <laughs> like, yeah, I couldn't... <laughs> I don't know what his involvement was, but he kind of became the, He's the one that go-to came up with scientist the, yeah. once, once they locked up. Blair, I think. Yeah, he had the big theory yeah. as to yeah. what was going on. So, right. Yeah, this one's kind of we're kind of I feel like getting all over the place, <laughs> yeah. but it's it's hard not to. Uh, um, let's just uh, say we're in Act Two. Yeah. <laughs> um. So the dog. Pound. Yeah, I definitely want to talk about the dog. Yeah, let's get into that. Um. So I like that everyone gets to witness kind of yeah. the, the horror, you know, but everyone gets. Basically, he gets to see it all at the same time. So the cards are on the table. It's not one of those, like, slowly, little by little, people start getting picked yeah. off and people slowly find out what's going on or, you know, yeah. what the what the threat is. I like that it's in everyone's face. You know, everyone has the same exposure to it. Um, so they all know exactly what's going on. Not, not that they know what, what's causing it, but they get to see it. The monster, you know, all together at the same time, I thought it was, you know, yeah, it was clever versus the slow reveal of, yeah, you know, a typical monster movie. Well, that and you see it and you still are like, what the, fuck? yeah, yeah, <laughs> like what is going on? There's still that mystery as to why this is even happening, sure, because it's pretty insane. <laughs> yeah, to see the, I mean, the tentacles the horror are flying, of the, the, the dog creature that's you know. Those tentacles are the best thing because yes. it's like that noise where you go. I know. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Yeah, and it's so creepy. It's like hair plugs, like looking things, like yeah. that just explode out of the dog. Yeah, 
And back to the dog's acting. I know, like, when he gets into the cage, he's looking like, okay, how do I do this? Mm-hmm. I put down my paws. Yeah. And then I sit. <laughs> And I'm hoping it's a mannequin from that point on yeah. or something because it's creepy how it just sits there and stares. Mm. Like it's just perfectly still, upright kind of, while all the other dogs are laying about. Yeah. Uh, and I'm kind of surprised the dogs didn't realize earlier. Yeah, I'm. Unless as they were that, bringing him in. Yeah, unless yeah. it's that good that it can... Because they were super chill just all yeah. laying down until the thing dog was actually in the middle of them. And I know it. Does a perfect quote job, yeah, of replicating. Right at that so point, it yeah, must have been a one of those perfect jobs or something. Yeah, because I thought they would have smelled. I was waiting for them to smell something and react and start yeah. barking at the other dog, but then it was too late. Oh yeah, <laughs> but yeah, the oh, it's the first like what the moment of this movie. Yeah, and it for sure does not disappoint. No, it's a it it holds up so well. Now, and that was the the. <clears throat> thing dog that was you know an animatronic thing uh thing that was uh stan winston who Mm -hmm. is like kind of legend in uh special effects animatronics yeah i think he did the all the terminator uh special effects um the metal skeleton walking around all that kind of stuff that's um, so. Yeah, I think there's something about it. Like, it would have been horrible if it was CG. Yeah. I haven't seen the 2011 version, but I've read that they did a mix of CG and maybe suit. Like, oh, guy okay. in a suit type effects. Sure. Um, and I'm sure makeup and prosthetics that go along with that. But, yeah, I'd be interesting now to watch the 2011 because I know it's supposed to be a prequel. Which makes me wonder if the 2011 is, if we, if that's all the Norwegian base. Yeah. So that would be kind of cool to see uh, how that, you know, horror. Yeah, I'm, like, I'm trying to remember, but I'm blanking on it. I've seen it. I just oh, you have? Can't. I just know it. two of the actors that are in it. Mary Mary Elizabeth Winstead. She was Ramona in uh, Scott Pilgrim. Oh. Okay. I know she's in it, and then that Joel Edgerton. He was. Oh yeah. He's in a seems like a bunch of stuff now, but I know he was in it. But I might watch that, you know, sometime soon. Just to now that I've seen this recently, so. yeah. Um, so I like I I also forgot that they do another excursion, and they go let's see how does it play out? Oh, they get all the research and some tapes from the Norwegian base, and mm-hmm. they find out that they were looking at this, you know, spaceship under the ground. Yeah. And is that what leads them to go search for that themselves? I think so, because that's when they stumble upon the bigger, um, because they're like, oh, it was bigger than that chunk you guys found the first time. Yeah. And there was a whole freaking spaceship, which, does that have beings in it, like, hibernating as well? No, so... I I, missed that. In the original story, um, they tried to, so they, they unearthed this spaceship they said it was there for like millions of years um and they tried to thaw it out with a thermite <clears throat> charge yeah i, I don't <laughs> seems a bit strange that you would try to use an explosive to thaw something um so they said that they basically they the first people that discovered it uh, basically destroyed the ship and then and then they found the alien pilot somewhere in the ice and they thought that it was you know had left the ship and was seeking warmth that's why they have that like separate area with like the little ice coffin Mm -hmm. that they dug out um i was really really hoping um that they would have gone inside the ship and started poking around inside of that so i was kind of disappointed that we didn't get any of that um you know i thought that would have been interesting to see kind of the alien architecture and you think you would have wanted to like i'm just surprised that they wouldn't like yeah as being <clears throat> scientists and you know well they got a lot going on now i guess that's true they're like uh we don't even want to go in here <laughs> yeah because it's a horror show that's true <laughs> so i'm trying to piece together this monster okay now the dog is infecting the other dogs and trying turning to them, them into yeah 
like the part that they bring up is that we they caught him before he could finish. Yeah. Uh, replicating into the but isn't he already a dog? Yeah. So was he trying to turn others into? Like was he trying to make I guess so? I thought he was trying to make others like him. Right. Because he's already a dog. And that's that's the other part that I'm not sure about with with the monster, the thing. Like, does it replicate or does it just right. take over? It seems One like host. it just takes over. That's what I thought. Um, but it makes no sense as to yeah. Other than I guess he was trying to become more perfect or something. Although like, I guess it does replicate because at this point, you know, spoilers. We know the dog is an alien. Mm. We know Clark that's true. is yeah. an alien. Blair, um, who else? Norris at some point. I mean, so okay, many so of them infection. become infected yeah. at the same time. Yeah. So it can't be a you know. It can't be like once it gets killed and then it transfers to someone else and then, you know, that one gets killed. So it must be a, they can all independently operate as mm-hmm. So they're like a things. collective or something? Yeah. Maybe they're in, in I read in the book, the in the original book, novella, whatever, um, it also was telepathic. Mm. They decided to not use that you yeah. know, aspect in this. I think it would have been too, too much, yeah. too easy for the thing to then, you know hide and and because it could it was telepathic it could read their thoughts and project mental images kind of to, to throw them off you know so <laughs> i think that was yeah yeah <laughs> yeah that would have been a bit much yeah Just the uh, tentacles i really thought it was weird the uh the program that blair was running that basically calculated their odds of survival <laughs> like what what compute what program are you using that, you know is breaking down the the chances of humanity's humanity's survival based on this blood that you've put into the machine, I, you know, yeah. it was it was a weird like they science the blood. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that I found was a little strange, but it's such a small yeah it's moment. Something that insurance companies use, yeah, where they could yeah figure out if you're gonna croak. <laughs> yeah, I think they just, I think they just needed to vocalize like if this thing gets to the main, you know, mm-hmm. the rest of the world, then. Humanity is would you know the chances of, of yeah. total whatever destruction or total like loss of humanity was you know whatever percentage they yeah I think we can all do the no duh math on that yeah yeah <laughs> it's basically like invasion of the body snatchers at that point right yeah you're like mom what, where are those tentacles coming from mm-hmm. oh if I, if they had a little baby that was a oh, oh, oh. yeah. <laughs> frightening that's the thing (laughs) um that's the thing that's really fun about this is is that it can become anything there's no real limit to what you know the monster could look like and they even said in the doc that kind of when you see it transition from you know dog to horrible tentacle monster to whatever else those are versions of other alien life forms that it, mm-hmm. it has also copied. Like, you know, yeah. at this point, it would be millions of years ago, you know, from other, you know, galaxies, other planets, wherever it's been before, it's copied those life forms. So when you see it in those transitions in this movie, you know, you're seeing it look like another creature, another alien that it once you know copied so, so it doesn't really know what it looks like anymore <clears throat> kind of and i've seen that before um there was a green lantern comic recently it was like a, a race of shape-shifting aliens that they didn't know what their original form was yeah. so yeah that's uh the effect of it sort of swirling into different things kind of made me think of that um uh clay guy from oh, batman yeah. yeah clayface yeah yeah, the end of that episode where he was morphing into yeah, yeah. all of it made me the think different... of that. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> I was thinking of uh, the end of Terminator Two when sure. the you know uh, T one thousand the the, mol- uh, the metal guy yeah. yeah when he's in the in the mm-hmm. you know molten steel like he's transitioning into everybody yeah. basically. Well, now radio's gone, so are the choppers. Yeah, we're completely cut off. All we can do now is hold up till spring, wait for the rescue team. No, we don't wait. Somebody in this camp ain't what he appears to be. Right now, that may be one or two of us. By spring, it could be all of us. So how do we know who's human? 
If I was an imitation, a perfect imitation, how would you know if it was really me? I there's there's a really nice transition from horror to suspense because basically I think once they go away from the dog monster autopsy stuff, we don't see it for a while. But yeah, it's a who done it now. <laughs> exactly. That they like replace <laughs> the the uh monster horror stuff with the suspense and the, they add the the human element of suspicion and doubt and then they mix that with like their personal feelings towards each other so if they've got problems like uh childs wanted to take the gun from from i think his oh, name was gary the mm-hmm. guy that seemed to be in charge i guess yeah the military man <clears throat> yeah like he wanted the gun but then mccready stepped forward and said you know let's let's go with someone who's a little more even tempered or level-headed <laughs> so you know there, there's personal feelings mixed in with all this doubt yeah um i think it's a it's a really smart way to advance you know this part of the story let the let the monster kind of take a break for a little while and let the people basically tear themselves apart. Mm-hmm. You know? And I'm sure that's what this alien does. It spreads doubt and discord. Yeah. And, yeah. I mean, it's a pretty intelligent being, mm-hmm. um, aside from its shape-shifting abilities. Yeah. Because it does that whole uh, torn laundry of McCready. Yeah. Yeah. It throws suspicion on him. Or that could have even been someone else that, didn't like McCready like Blair. Sure. It could have been him because I forget at what point that's they what lock makes up them Blair. leave him in the like cut him loose. Yeah, in the uh, night of the Arctic winter or whatever. Yeah, when they're trying to get from point A to point B outside. <laughs> yeah, and... That was my favorite Kurt Russell. <laughs> was at that point <laughs> frozen like, Kurt Russell. Fuck you guys. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> and I like I'm that blow point. Us all the hell. <laughs> yeah, he just basically strapped himself with dynamite <laughs> for the rest of the movie. Like if any of you guys mess with me <laughs> it's just a he went from like this <laughs> he even said he even said at one point any of you guys touch me it which made me think of uh stripes like any of you guys touch my stuff i'll kill you yeah. any of you homos touch me i'll kill you <laughs> all right francis yeah there was uh i like how it escalated from holding a flare to a flamethrower <laughs> to the yeah. Uh, sticks of dynamite yeah. i was like wow yeah. okay and it's funny because it's like that makes me really really want to watch the what happened with the norwegians like did it kind of go the same way where people started to turn on each other and you know just get crazy and now they're peaceful people yeah <laughs> they probably went all viking on each other right um i think we should definitely talk about the the norris scene with uh Norris is the guy with the stomach, you know, yeah. bursting. Stomach. Well, it, it wasn't so much stomach bursting as it was stomach morphing into yeah. a giant mouth. Yeah. <laughs> so let's get into that part. Um, yeah. Uh, oh. that, um, was, that was, I think, the most over the top. Okay. By far. Oh, really? By far. Because okay. you got his stomach opening up. There's these giant teeth. It's mm-hmm. basically a Venus flytrap yeah. growing out of his stomach all of a sudden. Yeah. <laughs> While the dude's doing CPR and chest compressions, <laughs> yeah. his hands go into the mouth. Yep. And the mouth closes and the stumps come flying about. <laughs> I'm like, okay, okay. Oh, man. See, I love that it's like part. That escalated so quickly. Yeah. Apparently electric shock is what wakes up the giant mouth belly. Yeah. So yeah, he basically has a what you think is a heart attack or something. Yeah, that was or the, had trauma from getting pushed over. Yeah, I couldn't tell it, while I was watching it. I couldn't tell because I thought maybe he fell back and hit his head. Yeah, you know. But yeah, apparently he was having a heart attack. So that was you know they they needed to get him up on the table. Yeah, you know? they needed yeah. him on a flat surface that I think ultimately they needed it so that they could hide all the. Oh, you know, yeah. special effects parts of it underneath the table you know <laughs> so that was definitely the best part of the making of documentary was watching hearing rob botine talk about that was a epic. how they did the stomach you know yeah. all that stuff and then how they did the head oh that oh man so it good like, it was like <clears throat> it was like a jellyfish just taking a dump or something that's how i pictured it oh because of all the stringy yeah it was all and... gooey and it was slow so and... oh. the cool part about that he was he was talking about that they needed to come up with you know they 
they didn't have like a, a box of parts for oh you want stretchy tendons you know we'll, we'll just use this so they yeah. had to make the stuff you know and it was a mixture of you know <clears throat> lacquer thinner paint thinner bubble gum all these various things that they just knew would would stretch and pull and rip apart um and they said that everyone was like hey it really smells bad you know it really um, oh yeah those are some pretty caustic <laughs> materials so then they they mentioned that oh yeah there's there's fire in this scene because there's fire like they burn <laughs> yeah. you know something else so they're like well we need some fire underneath the camera lens you know so that there's like flames right at the bottom of the camera uh-huh. um and said once they lit that all the fumes from the oh, this but. stuff that they created just went up and like the entire room, they said filled up with a big fireball with the actors, with the director. Like you know, <laughs> they didn't know that they well you know, oh really? all these chemicals that we've used to create Lacker this and effect. Paint thinner. <laughs> yeah, <clears throat> so it's a, that's an awesome part of that documentary that you know just look up. Uh, I think they've even separated it. Like look up the thing making of head head spider or head monster or something like that. Yeah. And then you'll find that entire sequence. It's worth watching. Uh, The Um, flick of the, like, just the head melting off the body, essentially. Going off the back of the table. And then just the facial, like, expression, Mm -hmm. especially when it shoots out that thing from its mouth. Yeah. The the tentacle. Yeah. And then it pulls itself. (laughs) My favorite, I think my favorite scene in this movie, special effect-wise or whatever, was you see the head kind of in silhouette and then those spider legs just yeah. reach out. And I could not figure out how they did it because there's also like smoke and fog yeah. in the room. So I don't think they could have done that stop motion because I don't think you can do fog or mist or smoke stop motion because then then yeah, your fog you'll... would just be yeah, choppy. Yeah, jerky yeah. Um, so I also don't understand how they – grew those legs on film you know it would have had been one motion where you know once they reach this point they grow another knuckle and then they bend and yeah. they extend further and grow another you know, sort set of, of knuckle so it's like i sort of was wondering if it was almost like a antenna where it has stages that it pops out of yeah but i don't know how you do that on film without stop motion yeah. without cutting yeah yeah it, it was amazing like yeah. it Hands down, one of one of I think one of the best special effects monster uh, oh, yeah. physical you know creatures. Yeah, I was mean, that head with the ones that sprouts the legs? I thought was pretty outstanding. So yeah, yeah, because I mean even in Alien, the I mean it's obvious it's a puppet. Yeah, because it's you know yeah staged and the mouth comes out and the second mouth comes out yeah you know like yeah you can figure it out in your head sure so you're yeah. just saying it's more of like a magic trick to you that you don't it, know it how is they because, could have done it because it happens so quickly and like i said you've got the smoke kind of in the background that's not you know it's like i get how they do stop motion you yeah you take a photo you bend the little arm take a photo you know you keep doing that but i, I don't know that one it, it truly mystifies me. <laughs> so that's kind of... Yeah, that's pretty much... That's, oh, and oh, we even, haven't uh, mentioned the doc's been locked up outside in the... Yeah, you got him locked up outside, yeah. but I want to mention that the the other doctor, I think it's Copper, the guy that was mm-hmm. uh, performing the, not the, CPR, but the he, defibrillator, chest compressions, chest compressions yeah. all that, um, for that special effect or for that sequence, they used a, an actor... Or a guy with, uh, he was a double amputee. Mm-hmm. And then they just took a, a rubber mask of the actual actor doctor. Wow. Put it on, on the amputee for that sequence, you know. So yeah. they actually had a guy with fake arms, you know, attached. Yeah. And then the stomach actually bit the arms in half, you know. And then they just had the amputee actor with the rubber mask, you know, kind of flailing around for a minute. You don't see him actually on you know, it works because you don't see like a close up of his yeah. face with the mask on. So. I really hope he didn't lose his arms in an alligator accident. <laughs> He'd have right. flashbacks. They they said that it was just an industrial accident. <laughs> That's all they said uh, about how he lost his arms. So who knows? Geez. Um But yeah, is that when they find out the doctor that's locked up outside? 
that he's been coming and going. Because they I, do the blood tests first. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm trying well, to think of like who's now living and who's dead. <laughs> I mean, it, it seems like people are dropping left and right at this point. Yeah, it gets chaotic in the transition from two to three. Yeah, because the doctor, you got, you got Norris, who obviously transitioned into the thing. And then, and then at the beginning of the blood test, the one guy pulls the scalpel. And tries to go after McCready. And See, that was like in a hallway, and they were trying to. Try to or maybe that's when McCready came back, and yeah. he had the uh, flamethrower pointed yep. at people. Mm-hmm. So that would, man, God, it's so chaotic. Yeah. See, it's hard to remember what's part of what. <laughs> yeah. yeah, but I know when they do the blood test, he wasn't an alien, right? Um, I'm blanking on his name. I could picture him. What was his? Uh, what was his job? Yeah, um, pool shark. Okay. <laughs> I think he was always playing pool when I saw him. Um, oh God, uh, he was always. Oh no, he was the guy that was with the dogs. Oh okay, Clark. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. He's the guy that was hold- the, with the scalpel. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah. But it turned out he was just human, and didn't trust uh oh that's McCready right because they tested wasn't. his blood they shot him okay. in the head that's yeah. right okay so he didn't get infected when yeah. the dog licked him that's what okay. i was just thinking about <laughs> okay because everyone was kind of surprised that his blood didn't <laughs> right. and then that one dude's says, like yeah so oh, that makes murderer. you a murderer <laughs> <laughs> i love childs yeah i know him from other things oh yeah that's like, Keith he's David. like in everything i feel like yeah he was in uh they live yeah. <clears throat> Had that 20 minute fight scene with <laughs> Roddy Piper. Yeah, I know um, it more from South Park. <laughs> yeah. Because they was... did a shot for shot remake of it on South Park with uh, Timmy. Oh, really? And uh, oh, the guy with the uh, uh, arm crutches. Oh, that's what that was a parody <laughs> was a, of? Yep. Okay, that makes more sense now. Yeah. <laughs> I. Obviously, they show I it saw next South to each Park, other. You know, before I ever saw They Live. Yeah. Okay, that, that's fine. Timmy versus Jimmy. Yeah. That's what it is. <laughs> Jimmy. Timmy. <laughs> and oh, instead man. of going, Ooh, they go, Jimmy. <laughs> that's awesome. I'm going to watch that. Yeah. It, it, they do like a side by side comparison so that's you can great. see it. Um, I, for Keith David will always be the voice of Goliath from the Gargoyles cartoon. Yeah. Like, that's. His voice, his voice is who I read when I'm reading anything with Swamp Thing. Like to me, that's what Swamp Thing should sound like is just yeah. that deep, gravelly. But he's kind of underused here. He's just he's just yeah. one of the guys. I mean, he, he gets ends used up... more in the end of the movie than yeah. in the beginning. But yeah, yeah, that and I think I always picture him as the flamethrower guy because he's the one that brings it in at the first. Yeah. Like, yeah, like McCready the dogs. needs flames. Yeah, <laughs> so I think of him as the pyro. Nice, he's the pyro technician in the group. Yeah, um, I think we're yeah we're at the, we're at into the end of Act Two. Um, the blood test was pretty cool. Like just coming up with the idea of it seems so simple. It's like why didn't they think of that? You know, yeah, earlier on they had to try to come up with some serum or you know they had some blood test that got foiled because. Because someone messed took, with all yeah. the blood, yeah. Have we figured out who that was? Because everyone thought it was uh, Gary, because he had the key. And it wasn't the other doctor guy, because he got his arms bit off. So who the hell could have gotten into that? I don't know if they ever actually reveal who think did they it. Do. I think anything that, like, who did it, kind of, to me, comes back to Blair. Because we find uh, out in the next act that he can come and go as he pleases. That's true. So I kind of guess that anything like that is or him. <laughs> yeah, that was really weird. Because the whole point was that it was locked and locked yeah. up again. We're going to draw a little bit of everybody's blood. We're going to find out who's the thing. Watching Norris in there gave me the idea that maybe every part of him was a whole. Every little piece is an individual animal with a built-in desire to protect its own life. You see, when a man bleeds, 
It's just tissue. No blood from one of you things won't obey when it's attacked. It'll try and survive. It'll crawl away from a hot needle, to say. Yeah, I, I like the blood test and just like the the noise of the wire on I know. the petri dish. Yeah, it's so it tense like, too. Is because... that gonna mean something? Right. Like, because well, you're when, waiting for some reaction, yeah. and you get that, and you're like, Ooh. "Well, when the blood actually, you know, they find out." I forget, <laughs> I forget now which one it was. Oh, it was uh, the stoner helicopter pilot. <laughs> yeah. When they test his blood, and it, you know, the thing grows out of the petri dish. <laughs> like I literally jumped, you know. Oh, um, I, I was like, "Holy shit!" Because yeah, <laughs> I didn't know, remember I, it being. I thought it for some reason in my head. I thought it exploded. Like oh, it, it, yeah. Or sure. like, you know, some kind of like flammable kind of thing. Like, poof. Okay. I didn't think it like sort of made a blood baby <laughs> yeah, or yeah. whatever it did. Yeah, that and, one got me by surprise. That was a that was a great sequence of just, you know. And I thought the blood was going to trail its way back to him. <laughs> yeah. Like yeah, to the, the show. blood on the floor. Yeah. Yeah. I thought that would have been cool if it went yeah. back to daddy. <laughs> And I think people were – well, actually, when that happens, I love that their other guys are still strapped to them. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> They're tied up to the same couch like, with the guy. That is funny. Like, get me on it. <laughs> yeah. And even after they kill that thing, they still leave him tied up. I know. And you can tell that Gary is super pissed about oh, it. Oh, yeah. yeah. Especially when they figure out he's not. Mm-hmm. Yeah, because what like, does he say? I don't like, want to spend the rest of the fucking winter I'm yeah, tied to this couch. I love how he says it too. He's like, I'm glad you guys are happy about. I forget how he says it, but yeah, then he just transitions into the get me off of this fucking couch. <laughs> Have you seen um, uh, Boondock Saints, the first one? Yeah, it's been a long time, but yeah. Uh, there's a bartender in that movie okay. called. Uh, I think his name's Fuck Shit or something like that because okay. he's got like Tourette's or something. Oh, nice! And uh, it, it just made me think of that guy because he's sure. like, "Get me off this fucking couch!" <laughs> Loved it. Yeah, because you could tell like it, it was just he hit his breaking point a while ago. <laughs> yeah, and he's been holding it in as yeah. a military dude, and it's just boom. <laughs> yeah. Oh, uh, uh, he has a better scene later too. <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> so they're going back out to. The dock that's been uh, isolated. Yeah. And, uh, oops, a daisy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, how do I, so was he digging those tunnels underneath? That's how I took it. Like, okay. He probably turned his hands into shovels. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> or an alien that had shuffle like hands at one point. <laughs> yeah. I couldn't tell if it was like already a pre existing cave system. Because, like, when they got further in the cave, it was like a warehouse. Like, there oh, were yeah. barrels and I don't there, think there was flooring. Scaffold. Yeah, <laughs> so it must have been some kind of pre existing basement. Yeah, he just dug the, the tunnel to get from to point it. A to point yeah, B. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Um, okay. That makes more sense. Um, how do I not remember him building a spaceship? <laughs> I did remember that part. I had no, that one took me by complete surprise. I was like, wait. Is that a fucking spaceship that he's making? Because it was yeah. saucer shaped and yeah. you know scrapped together parts Both for and... one. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, oh, I'm like what? Where did this come from? <laughs> that reminds me. Remember at the beginning, uh, somebody wrecked the helicopters. Yes. And, yes. And now that we know this was the payoff of that. <laughs> yeah. Because it wasn't just to keep him there; it was to yeah. help himself. Yeah. And. We sort of glossed over the first transformation of a human. Remember his hands? Oh, yeah. Fuchs. Fuchs, yes. No. Wait, no, not Fuchs. No, the guy that uh, got shot. Yeah. The uh, first guy to turn, he yeah. gets walked in on while turning. Right. And he's running, and he's, like, hunched with his hands in his chest, and yeah. they catch him because he's still, like, morphing. Yeah. And it's that shot where he looks up, and he's, like... His eyes are black. Yeah. And yeah, his those... hands are all extended yeah. and gross looking. Look like Admiral Akbar hands. <laughs> <laughs> I love that part. Yeah, I totally that was forgot great. about it until yeah. just now. Well, and they just... It's crazy in that point, because you think that everyone would be like, well, let's let's see if we can help him, or let's, you know, but they, oh, but McCready is just, he just kicks over a barrel and lets, lets him get, you know, enough kerosene or whatever and just lights him up. Like, see, doesn't even hesitate. People like you, they'll I get know, us killed. That's true. But yeah. let's help him out. Okay. Yeah, let's, let's wait and see what happens. Yeah. <laughs> Did you not see the dogs? Right, yeah. Because <laughs> that one guy stopped Kurt Russell from killing it. Yeah. 
He didn't want him shoot, yeah, yeah. shooting the dogs and stuff. And look how that turned out. Yeah. So think about that, Travis. All right. That's true. Kill or be killed. Yeah, I just don't it's have a that, of the uh, that and the survival Arctic. mentality that that cold hearted. That's right. It's just facts. Instinct that, that Patrick has. That's right. Pee break number two. <laughs> um. So I don't have a ton of notes from from Act Three, basically. Oh yeah, um, I got sort of sucked in because <clears throat> it's all coming down to like they find out he's missing. Yeah. Like, How the hell did he get out? Yeah. It's been bolted from the I, outside. And... At some point, they realize that. Uh, they can't let it get out into the ice. You know, they can't let it escape because they know they know now that all the vehicles are trashed. Yeah. Uh, did they ever trash the? Uh, the I think they're called snow cats. It's like the yeah that, that happened with the okay. uh, helicopters. Okay. So I like that they figure out. You know, it's basically going to try to escape into the snow, freeze, hibernate, yeah. hibernate until someone else finds it. You know. Maybe the rescue party, I think, is what they bring rescue up. Rescue party, yeah. Or it could it could hibernate there for a thousand years until someone else eventually, you know, comes across it. Yeah, this thing is patient. Yeah, and yeah. Creepily so. And as we know, man is the warmest place to hide. <laughs> um, but I definitely like that they figure out that you know, we've got a. I think he even says, like, let's turn up the temperature or something like that. Yeah, because he blowing doesn't... That, start blowing the hell out of the, the base. And there's a good line at, towards the end where he's like, it's not going to last long, like how yeah. like, the base is heated up. Yeah. But it's a nice callback to the Norwegian base. Yeah. And it's why that place was burnt to hell and, and you know, blown up. But so. I want to know how they kept a helicopter. Yeah. <laughs> or maybe well, that's why the they took care of it. Yeah, right their Blair didn't destroy their last means of of escape i assume that's why it went after the helicopter first <laughs> could have been yeah it learned from like yeah. i gotta take out all the transportation uh in the i read in the book they had to like all the people realized what was going on and so they made the decision to destroy their transportation because their plan was basically we're gonna isolate ourselves <clears throat> Destroy all the transportation, and then we but we've got to keep someone on the radio saying, like whenever someone from civilization radios in, we got to make it seem like everything's perfectly fine. No, you know, because if they destroy the radio, then civilization is going to try to radio the base yeah. and find out no one's responding, and then send a rescue team. So they have to try to avoid that. So well, it's I mean, actually the people in the in the original story. It's actually the the crew that says, you know, we've got to cut ourselves off. And eventually, you'd think somebody would say, hey, where are those guys in the Arctic go? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know? Right. So it kind of makes sense why Blair was trashing all the vehicles, and then he trashed the radio room, because yeah. he uh, wants people... It's not like that worked anyway. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's yeah. uh, it sort of escalates quickly in this act, because they yeah. find out he's been up to no good. <laughs> yeah. Um, there's only a handful of guys left now. Um, yeah, it's Gary, uh, Gary um, Blair, Thing, mm-hmm. Monster, um, McCready, McCready, and Childs. Yep. I don't know when the uh, the cook died. Yeah, I, don't I lost track of Oh, him. no, he was down there with them, and it was this real weird moment where I think Gary gets killed. He gets the hand. Gets the hand in the face, yeah. and then gets dragged away, and that's when the cook, like, he notices something and he walks off towards where we know Blair mm-hmm. is and we don't see him ever again. Okay. Yeah. So I he like, must I don't remember he, he seeing gets him. killed off screen okay. or or is missing, you know. There's a there, there's our sequel. Yeah. You know, he's our sequel guy. <laughs> Someone survived. <laughs> I do like how pretty quickly McCready realizes I'm the only one around. Everyone else is suddenly just gone. Yeah. You know, so he kind of realizes something's up. He looks around in the basement and he's like, uh, yeah. No. And then shit just gets, you know, goes crazy. Like the floor starts to. Oh, yeah. Tremors. You know, tremors. tremors yeah. Of. The tremors moment. And then it just kind of becomes a big giant tentacle monster trying to take over. The tremors. Big, <laughs> tremors. Yeah. Turns into the movie <laughs> Tremors. <laughs> yeah. Man, I can't believe they ripped off Tremors. I know. I assume somebody saw that and they're like, we can make a movie out of that. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> And they were right. I like that when the Blair thing, like once it's you know big and 
<laughs> you know, big and scary and stuff. Like its chest opens up and the a dog part yeah. like, comes out. You know, that's that's kind of cool. It, it, like it's it, like uh, it turned into its own Voltron. Yeah, <laughs> with your powers combined. Oh. Yeah, it was like this is all of me. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it would have been cool if there were like you know a face of each victim, like you see a Norris face and a. Um, now I don't remember who all. Yeah, I was. I was thinking over, it was but... gonna be like help me. Yeah, like oh, they were still great. like like it absorbed every being. Like they're still kind of there, yeah. you know. Yeah, but... <laughs> not to make it even more horrific. But... Yeah, yeah. Because it, oh, it, they absorb the person, so you their could, memories you and their could, yeah. yeah. So you'd think they could absorb their being or whatever. Yeah. Because then hmm. it's almost like, um, uh, what's his face, Shang Tsung from Mortal Kombat. Oh yeah, he absorbs the souls. Yeah. of the fighters he destroys. Your soul is mine. Yeah, and then you know, of course, when he's weakened, they fight back against him. Oh yeah, kind of thing, you know. Yeah. When the master is uh, weak, then the Souls of the slaves right, uprise right. and try to destroy them. <laughs> that was going to be kind of like that or something. Okay. Yeah, like each part would sort of scatter gotcha. like, to survive or oh, something. Oh yeah, kind of weaken it as it. Like each being's base instinct takes over yeah. and just like evacuates the main host or mm. something. <laughs> yeah, sort of like escape pods. <laughs> nice. So just think of the thing as a giant spaceship. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> uh, God, it's so jacked up, though. Yeah, like, I, I like that. Like uh, its face kind of like has this jaw that opens up on the side. Yeah, like that was pretty creepy. Yeah, if I close my eyes, I can still see it. <laughs> Patrick see. hasn't slept for yeah. two days. That's right. Always watching. Yeah, always watching. That's why I made Travis take a blood test before we yeah, started. Yeah, we did. We started with blood cut tests. him good. <laughs> I cut my entire thumb from tip <laughs> to bottom. I know. It's like, I don't think you need that yeah. much. It's like when people cut the palm of their oh, hand. Oh, so it's dumb. Like, that's the worst place to yeah. get a cut. It's like, why don't you cut between my toes? Yeah, you're going to be moving that. <laughs> yeah. You know, so you know, pick a spot that's, you know. Jeez. That you're not going to be like, bending and. It's like, oh, I can just shave so and cut myself that yeah. way. There you go. Yeah. <laughs> that's funny. Oh, yeah. But uh, I like the sort of. Fun way they end the movie with uh, yeah those two it's Childs just, and, and, uh, and uh, McCready. McCready. Uh, it's like so what the hell just happened? How is uh, this ending? Yeah, is, like am I supposed thing. to be happy? <laughs> right, and it is he an alien? <laughs> right, <laughs> like it just sort of leaves you going, huh? They should have. Well, I, I'm not gonna say they how they should have ended it because I kind of like how bleak of an ending yeah. it is you know it, it's nice that i assume they're just gonna both sit there and i forget did one of them i feel like they both had you know mccready had a shotgun yep. and childs had a flamethrower yep. where they bas- basically just pointed at each, at each other like i'll kill you or you'll kill me or that kind of thing yeah and then i think curl says let's just rest yeah let's wait it out um, <laughs> yeah, let's see it. It seems like they could have done another blood test. Yeah, but you got to assume one of them is, and they're See, not going to let yeah, that go very know. far. Because yeah. at one point, <laughs> Childs only in a group. left. Childs had basically left the whole group, mm-hmm. and he was out running around in the snow at one point. Like, I always thought he was the one that was safe, and Kurt Russell was the... Oh, the, okay. Creedy was the alien. Really? Because he spent the most time yeah. around the alien, at least on film. Yeah. So I thought he had the better chance of getting infected maybe. by that giganto monster. Yeah, maybe. Because Childs, I don't know what the <laughs> he was doing. And that's what makes me think. Unless he, he was pre-exposed right. before yeah. all that. Uh, yeah. It's too hard because there's so many things just happening. Been human, and they both yep. just waited for death, you know. To... Well, really, they had no choice at yeah. that point. Yeah. I mean, they both knew they were pretty much stuck there. Yeah. They couldn't have walked to safety or... <laughs> yeah. They knew no one. They couldn't radio anybody. So yeah. You're just like, well, fuck. Man. Yeah. See, <laughs> uh, it makes more sense when the, you think about like the Norwegian that slit his throat. I think, uh-huh. you know, took himself out that way. <laughs> he did it in an epic fashion because it was like almost chopped off. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I was like, that's true. Could that even happen? Right. I don't. Th- yeah, I don't think you can. <laughs> like it was like on own. a hinge. Yeah. It was just yeah. wide open. Yeah. 
I've never but, yeah. seen. <laughs> I don't get that part, but yeah, yeah I, cause even if you slit yourself, I mean, what's that going to do? Yeah. But yeah, it, it sort of just ends like that. And it's yeah. like the thing. <laughs> and I guess Credits. Uh, it didn't do great. Nope. Um, the box made, office wise and I think the budget was 15 million. And I didn't even look at the budget. U S gross was like 13. Oh, wow. So they may have made it in international. Sure. Yeah, it didn't. It do definitely so hot. you know became a cult yeah. hit. Or see, it it doesn't feel like a cult movie. It feels like a, a movie that should be that should have legitimately been a hit. You know, it's just it, it's not destined to be a good go out to the movies kind of movie. That's true. It's and not, horror usually isn't anyway. Yeah, yeah, that's true. And. It's pretty. I know damn it came bleak. out the same. Uh, it came out the same day as Blade Runner. <laughs> so some bleak ass movies. Yeah, yeah, that would have been a dark like weekend at the at what the, the movies. Hell was going on in eighty two? Yeah, I ran Contra. Yeah, <laughs> everyone was just like depressed and I don't know. Yeah, I was still blissfully crapping my pants. Yeah, I was. I was not even a thing. <laughs> <laughs> Ooh. Uh, let's see. So I mean, I, I we're definitely I think at the end. Yeah. Um. So I'm ready to talk about some. some Can't really what do, holds up, what yeah. doesn't hold up. I mean, I mean, it's gonna be a no brainer. Yeah, I didn't have anything for doesn't hold up because all the special effects are pretty beautiful. I mean, the dog monster. <laughs> oh, part of the uh, that doc documentary that I watched that when he when they made the dog monster that like opens up and they release that like so it kind of looks like a flower that opens up yeah like, it yeah, opens yeah, up yeah. its chest and then this thing comes out that was gonna be like spores or something <laughs> um, they said it looks like a flower kind of mm -hmm. but if you look at it if you like freeze frame it and look at it it's made up of, of a bunch of dog tongues with <laughs> like dog teeth you know, so it's like even creepier, you know. <laughs> I thought you were going to say an anus or something. No, no. <laughs> dog butthole. <laughs> no. a, a flower of dog yeah, anuses yeah, yeah. or something. I would not put it past this movie right. to do that. Yeah, I'm sure uh, that there was a, you know, I'm, when he was like sculpting all the, the monsters and stuff, they were probably, he probably threw in a butthole somewhere <laughs> in there. <laughs> So the Red Rocket didn't make an appearance. Yeah. That was good. Yeah. <laughs> That's funny. Whoa, whoa. Yeah. Um, I, I really, it's, I mean, the practical effects are awesome. Yeah. Uh, the they, acting was really good. Yeah. For I mean, for what it is. Yeah. It, it's not like a drama or anything. But right. It, I mean, everyone's believable as in, like, stressed, tension, yeah. Yeah. mistrust. And, uh... Granted, Travis thought the best actor was the dog, but that's it. Yeah. <laughs> no, I mean, yeah, it all just works. The you only know? thing is, is like the weird sort of alien aspect to it. Okay. It's like, what is the purpose? I guess. Like, why does this one being want to be here? Yeah. Like, I don't know the being's motivation, other than to consume. <laughs> what is its mission? <laughs> what is its mission? Yep. <laughs> I guess I assume it's a well, because it did it. It didn't crash here. It looked like it landed here. That's what I was about to say. Like it could have crashed. We don't know if it intended to come to Earth or maybe it was a crash landing. So it looked like it was coming in for a landing at the beginning. Yeah, and maybe um, something went wrong. But or maybe its mission is so just go to spread. maybe there's a million or that whatever a thousand of these flying saucers with each with a thing host and they just go out to every planet you know yeah. and when they land they wait to be found or they leave the ship and then they just try to consume whatever world they yeah. you know come across maybe that's its whole purpose is just to spread consume. out and consume <laughs> yeah, i don't know yeah. yeah there there definitely is no it'd be interesting to find out what race um, this is what that know, might be part of the well, I mean, it's called the thing because they know nothing about it. Yeah, they don't know what else uh, to call it. Yeah. So I guess it's weird not knowing a main villain's yeah. motive. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And the fact that it's just, it seems too indestructible almost. Kind of like Alien. Kind of, yeah, because yeah. it's like, 
it's been frozen for like how long? Yeah. And then, yeah. It's thawed it, out and it's perfectly fine. Yeah. Yeah. And then it can adapt so easily. Yeah. Like it's too powerful almost. <laughs> like, right. Yeah. It's like, oh yeah, it can then learn your language and know all your friends. and <laughs> Yeah. Well, as soon as it takes over your yeah. body and your memories, yeah, it, it would probably, it spoke Norwegian when it was yeah. written Norwegians because... Like, the host spoke. It doesn't Norwegian. give much of a chance for the other race, <laughs> right? Which is why I'm glad they cut out the, telepa- the yeah. telepathy. I'm like, man, it only takes like one small turn, and you're yeah. in like friggin' Canada. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I guess we should we could transition into the most heroic and most villainous, but I'm not sure if it works for this. It one. doesn't because it's <laughs> like we said, it's not a being that we understand. It's, yeah, I mean. And, it seems to be more instinctual than... Like, well, and even the humans. Like, no one... Nobody seems to They're be... all kind of out to save themselves, yeah. kind of at a certain point, you know, and, and everyone is distrustful of everybody. Like, I guess the most heroic is to try to kill, you know, everyone at this base, you know, in order to prevent the thing from getting out. But there's really no heroic moment or even most villainous like you know because it's entire well that's part of what i don't understand because the only way to kill it is by flaming it up yeah but even then when that one body was toasted it was still had moving cells and the one that got yeah they brought in brought back yeah the storage room or whatever yeah Yeah. because the doc said it still had living uh cells or something so it's like did anyone really take care of anything (laughs) Yeah, I think yeah, I think we should just skip. <laughs> See, this is why villainous. we have to take global warming seriously, right? Ice caps are going to melt. There's going to be a wicked alien that comes out of it, <laughs> probably. <laughs> yeah, our ancient forefathers created the ice caps to trap the thing. That's true, and now we're melting it, and just way to go. God, we suck. <laughs> Everyone's talking about rising sea levels, but yeah. Oh, I bet the rising sea levels because of the melted caps. Yes, relates in a some kind of water monster, mm. and when we melt it and free him, we've already made the world more adaptable for him. We're turning it into water, water world. world. <laughs> Drinking our own pee before we know it. Oh yeah, and growing gills on our neck. <laughs> Mutant. <laughs> I love Waterworld. <laughs> I honestly have not seen it since probably it came out on video. I watched it a couple years ago. Probably, I don't know, four or five, I guess. But it's just a fun, you know. Or Mad Max Water. Yeah, yeah. Water Park. <laughs> yeah. It's funny, uh, uh, Rory just did Waterworld on Hangover mm-hmm. Reviews. Well... What yeah, there's, it's weird. Like, there's not much we can really talk yeah. because we both seem to have liked it a lot. Oh yeah, for sure. But uh, there's nothing else. It sort of falls out. You of can't the, pick it apart too yeah. much. I mean, I I have one. I mean, it's essentially a cabin in the woods movie. Yeah, except I have, it's cabin in the yeah. Arctic. <laughs> yeah. Same theory though. Um, well, let's just jump into pros and cons. If you have anything you have you haven't already. I don't have a whole lot of cons, and the yeah. pros are pretty obvious. It's the effects and like right. the, just like the visual, uh, um, sort of the Arctic uh, scenery. Yeah, like how I they wanted, that I off. did want to talk about that because the the uh, director of photography was Dean Cundy, and let me I wrote down a couple of his like other works. He did Hook, Jurassic Park, all of the Back to the Futures. I mean, Dang. and he worked with Carpenter on Halloween, and I think a lot of the Halloween movies. So hmm. the guy is, you know. He's got some crud. With his photography mixed with, you know, Rob Bottin's special effects, like that was one of my pros was their work together just it created just that so many just visually pretty stellar moments in this movie. Yeah, I mean, I believe they were in the Arctic. Yeah, and they were in like... Way way up north in Canada, like Canada Alaska sure. border, and they basically they said they waited till they went out in summer when it was just like a dirt field, and they built everything. They mm-hmm. built the um, 
the base. They built all the outbuildings and all that stuff. And then they just Makes waited sense. waited for there to be snow, you know, come yeah. six months later. Yeah, because I like the uh, tie ropes yeah. and the lights yeah. and stuff. It made it like, uh, I mean, it made sense yeah. so you could find your way back. Right. And sort of leads back to that part where Kurt Russell shows up after getting ditched. And they're like, nothing could have survived out there without yeah. a tow line. Yeah. Except for Kurt Russell. Hell yeah. His beard of snow and ice. That's right. <laughs> I did kind of like how they uh, all seem to get that look of we haven't slept in a really long time. Yeah. And, like, yeah. they were getting space madness. Mm-hmm. <laughs> that was kind of cool. Yeah. I mean, it was basically like a, like alien. just. And that was kind of one of my cons. It, it felt a lot like yeah. it borrowed a lot from Alien. Like, even mm-hmm. at the beginning, um, the crew discovers, like, previous carnage from, yep. you know, like an alien. They go down to the planet. They find the ancient ruins and then they find their crew dead. Um, it's kind of similar here. They go to the Norwegian base. Um, so just a, small moments like that. But then it's like, well, this movie is adapted from the original book, which came out before Alien. So, you know, it can't yeah. really say, but at least cinematically, they kind of feel similar. Yeah. So that's... It's a minor thing. I mean, it, it totally works for both movies. You yeah. Know. Um, my only other con is the there was a conscious choice to leave out female characters that were, I think, in the book, and mm-hmm. uh, they even said like, you know, at this point there were female research scientists, female crew, you know, in the Antarctic working at these stations, like. But they said, John Carpenter said, at the time, he felt like it would be more interesting to just have a male cast. So, and he stressed, like, at the time, you know. <laughs> um, I mean, and I guess it's not to say that there couldn't be I'm sure there a were story that centered all guy. around, you know, a group of men. But, yeah. you know, it's kind of one of those things, like, you couldn't make that today and say, we're only going to have, you know, a bunch of men. Well, it's not to say that there wasn't an all-male research team and there could either. have been so it could have been something that really I've would seen, have um, yeah the show called destination truth okay where he goes around and like there's one where he's looking for the yeti yeah and they come across a russian scientist team in okay. the um what you call it cold part of russia siberia siberia okay and it's all dudes yeah <laughs> But, I mean, they yeah. have had females there because they have a... Sure. <laughs> unfortunately, they have a bar in their research facility. Yeah. And it's covered in bras. <laughs> oh, nice. Because you can get a free drink if you give them their give them bra. Right. <laughs> so it's not the best... Not the best, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Example. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but that shows women yeah. have been there. They've left their mark. Right, yeah, yeah. Bras. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, you could play the card that, yeah, yeah. America just sent up a bunch of dudes. It was... yeah. Maybe fraternity week right. instead of sorority week, or and sometimes they almost feel like if there is a female in the yeah, crew, it becomes sort of a, becomes a, a like a trope almost. Like it's like yeah, you're waiting for someone to either she's going to turn into the thing that everyone's feared, or she's going to get a lot of people killed, or she's going to be the badass hero at the end. Yeah, <laughs> like, or some she'll asshole. be a main piece to it. It yeah. seems like yeah. Or some asshole is going to make a move on her because, yep. you know, yeah. It'll be blatantly obvious that she's the only female. Yeah, yeah. And it's it, it's very rare, it seems like, that there's a female in the group that isn't, it isn't beaten over your head that there's right. a female in the yeah. group. Yeah. That's why I liked um, when they talked about making Alien, like, the... All the roles, all the characters could have yeah. been male or female. It, it didn't <clears throat> matter, you know, if the character didn't matter if it was male or female. Like, they could have cast anybody. So that yeah. was, yeah. Because I feel like they screw that up a lot. Yeah. Where they have one, like, the new Ghostbusters. Yeah. Where uh, Thor was the one dude. <laughs> yeah. And it was just, like, straight up, just, look, we got a dude with these girls. Right. Yeah. <laughs> like, yeah. And we're going to make it plain and obvious that he is a dude. Yeah. Like, there's no just subtle... <laughs> I don't know, that just yeah. jumped to mind when I thought of a reverse situation. Sure. But That's weird. I don't know. It's done well sometimes, but other times, like, too often it's not done well. Right. 
don't know. Where, where, where? Yeah. <laughs> it's hard to... Uh, <laughs> I think, I mean, I, at this point, I'd, I'd say we should just hit our overall thoughts and ratings and call this one done, unless you have more, like... Not this. really. I mean... Yeah. I enjoyed it. I watched it a couple years ago. Still enjoyed it this time. Yeah. Um, it... At its core, it's just, you know, like a monster in the woods kind of movie. Yeah. Um, I don't even think of it as an alien. It's just a monster to me. Sure. Like, I, could, I think they could have gone away from the alien part. <laughs> yeah, you could um, cut out. Yeah. And it's just a ancient being that lived here in the ice before or something. Yeah. Like, it didn't have to be an alien. Um, and, uh, I mean, the effects still hold. It's a really good movie to watch at night. Uh, I mean, you're not going to watch it a lot, but maybe every couple of years or so. Yeah. Uh, maybe but, this could become, you know, your once a year Halloween movie. Yeah. Like, you know. I yeah. can see that. I mean, I'd give it like, uh, man, I really want to give it a five. Yeah, I'm going to go with it. I don't care. <laughs> Screw you guys. Right. It, it was just anything. Like, that's what I want. It's yeah mystery. It's man being its own worst enemy. It's yep. I don't know. It was just a lot of fun. Um, I'm right there with you. Um, it, it fits up there. I mean, we've only done one other sci-fi horror movie mm-hmm. with Alien, but it fits right up there with it. It holds up. The effects are great. Um, we, I mean, even like saying that, we couldn't think of anything effects-wise that doesn't hold up. Because no. you know, really, it, it you can see that it's an animatronic thing dog, but it still works. Like It still looks it, really cool. It's... Um, that and like the noise, like the fully yeah, work of the yeah, the lighting, the uh, you know, like I said, the the mixture of the photography with the the effects, the lighting, all that stuff. It, and I wonder how that sort of looks to somebody born in the CG sure. era, or not born, but yeah, yeah, at least grown up in the CG area. If it looks yeah. cheesy, like right. um, Clash of the Titans and their claymation looks to me, sure. With the skeletons. Yeah. And, well, I guess Evil Dead 2 is the same kind of... Mm-hmm. Yeah. Was it Evil Dead Army of Darkness. Army of Darkness, yeah. that's what I meant. Uh, where it's like that stop motion, obvious yeah. claymation, but maybe back then that was awesome and they still like it. Like, I, yeah. I, I'm curious to see somebody that was like born in the 90s that grew up with a lot of CG sure. if they enjoy... Well, and it, even like... Because I think it holds up better than CG does. Yeah. Like, if you look at... Aside from like Jurassic Park or I was just going to say, you know, it, it's funny because you have a movie like Jurassic Park that legitimately holds up today. Yeah, the CG in that movie but that's the pinnacle. still looks really good, <laughs> but it's weird. It's like, you know, then why in two thousand what seven with Spider Man three can you pick out which moments are CG? You know, like when he's in like the black costume, he looks like a gray cartoon. You know, why yeah. is it is it so good in 1993, but then obvious in the 2000s, and it doesn't hold up, and... It's how you use the yeah. art form. It's, yeah. I mean, plus Jurassic Park had some practical, too. Yeah. I mean, it's yeah. a mixture. It's that happy medium right. that people they have. Use a, it right, yeah. Because, like, from... Like, Matrix is another example of... Yeah. It, it's probably overused, but it's so well done that yeah. you don't you forgive it it's just it's all context it's yeah yeah because <laughs> like if you've ever seen air force one with harrison ford sure at the end when the plane crashes into the ocean it's okay. got to be my worst yeah big budget cg effect ever because I... the plane like skips on the water then cracks in half and really then... It's just so obvious that it was rendered on a computer. Okay. Like, I feel like I'm watching them make it as it's being filmed. That's <laughs> like, funny. It is just awful. Huh. Awful. I haven't seen that movie he, in like, years. Because he, like, jumps out of the plane as it's coming down. <laughs> like, huh. I, ugh. Yeah. Go back and just see that. Yeah. You'll see what I'm talking about. Okay. And that was from, like, I don't know, 99, 98 yeah. or something. I remember going to see that movie. But, and, yeah. Ugh. That's bad. But, yeah, I've always kind of wondered how people view it that didn't grow yeah. up with it. I think, I mean, and I only saw this movie a couple of years ago, so, hmm. you know, it and it held up then, yeah. you know. So I would say that this is one of those that I don't know if it matters kind of when you watch it. Like, it's going to hold up, basically. 
And the horror aspect of it is so good that you give up, you you overlook the, oh, that's a puppet, you know? Yeah, and there so. were some points where it was just, like, over the top. <laughs> sure. Like, they really went for it. Like, yeah. it is just insane. Mm-hmm. It's like, why does it have to do all that just to turn into a dog? Right, yeah, <laughs> yeah. It's like, that looks painful. Yeah. Uh, well, yeah, I gave it a five as well, so, yeah, this is a perfect five for us. That's right, it's the perfect movie. Suck it. Any <laughs> I'm not defensive. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, that was the thing. Yeah. I'm well, glad sorry, that you had John a, Carpenter's the thing. John Carpenter's the thing. Not and, Jerry and I guess Carpenter. the the one from the fifties uh, was they dropped a lot of the the body you know, obviously back then they couldn't have done the yeah. shape shifting aspect of it. It was basically just a guy in a suit with some prosthetic type stuff on his face and he was more just a a movie know. monster <laughs> yeah yeah like the they said it was game. more like a frankenstein movie <laughs> oh, okay you know um i was recently lucky enough to be on the the princess bride minute it's i've talked about the other minute shows you know quite a bit in the past uh, it all started with star wars minute where they talk about each each minute of the movie they break it down and, and discuss the whole thing and there's a ton of a ton of those movies now or podcasts based on movies. Um, there's Back to the Future. There's you know, Ghostbusters, um, Lord of the Rings, Harry Potter. But uh, Jonathan and Steve are doing Princess Bride. Um, so it was a lot of fun. I was on minutes 13, 14, and 15. So, um, yeah, give that a look and a listen. And um, Those minute podcasts I think of as like a uh, Bible study for movies. Yeah. Where you take the Bible and study each verse. <laughs> oh, I bet there is one. <laughs> Bible verse by... Oh, I mean, that's what a Bible study is. It's breaking oh. it down, like, okay, yeah. verse by verse. And, Probably is a podcast for that, yeah. And uh, that's basically what you're doing with these movies, is taking it apart piece by piece. That's true, yeah. Trying to figure out the meaning behind it all. Yeah. We're worshipping movies. <laughs> I don't know. It just seems like it would be hard to talk about a minute of a movie. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, I think that's it, though. Okay. Um, All right, yeah. So, off on a tangent. It's no no <laughs> better like way every, to end it. Just like every episode. Yeah. All right, well, we'll see you guys for Evil Dead. Peace. Travis here. Just wanted to pop in and say that our next movie will actually be Return of the Jedi, and not The Evil Dead. For the full explanation of the change, listen to our previous episode, Trailer Talk number 8, and you'll hear the full story of the lost episode of The Evil Dead. Thanks for listening, and we'll catch you next time. Return for the climactic clash between the forces of good and evil. Return to a galaxy far, far away. Return of the Jedi. The next chapter in the continuing Star Wars saga. The battle for freedom rages on. The heart of a hero. The courage of a rebel. The strength of a leader. The loyalty of comrades. The power of the Force. The cunning of the enemy. Destiny revealed. Is Darth Vader my father? A legend fulfilled. An epic of heroes, villains, and aliens from a thousand worlds. It's a trap! The quest continues. The circle closes. The saga lives on. Return of the Jedi begins May 25th at a theater in your galaxy.
Uh, <laughs> pee break. <laughs> yeah. Step away from the mic. Jeez. No, it's fine. We can't stop for anything.